And then it is believed that the, the beginning of the next stage, this is the Barzakh stage, right? We've got these five stages. The next stage begins. In the Barzakh, there are angels that come. Two angels, Munkar and Nakir. These angels are very frightening. They're very powerful. They have voices like thunder. And they ask a person, who is your Lord? What is your deen, your, your religion, your way? And who is your prophet? The Prophet Muhammad said, the only thing a man takes or a woman takes into their grave will be their actions. According to the tradition, because now you're moving into the realm of meaning. You're no longer in the realm of sensory. Although the realm of sensory is a symbolic realm, according to the Quran, these are signs. In the next world, the signs, right, it's not sensoria that you're in, you are in meaning. So all of the things that you did in this, in this life are translated into meanings in the next life. So there are these foul creatures that people will find in their grave that smell and they have a strong stench and the soul is distressed by it. And the soul says, leave me alone, who are you? And they say, don't you know us? We're your actions. And this is people who did evil things in their lives. And then there's others where it's very pleasant and there's a perfume that, that diffuses and the soul finds itself in this. And, and, and he asks, who are you? And they say, we're your good actions. So these angels ask, and this begins the testing phase. And according to the Quran, it says, we will make firm those who believed and did good works in this life and in the next, with the true word, which is La ilaha illallah. We will make them firm so they won't have these tribulations. And the Prophet ﷺ said that according to the, a person's experience in the grave, that will determine whether what comes after it is easy or difficult. So it's the first stage of the next journey. At this point, the grave either becomes a very wide and expansive or it becomes dark and constricted based on what people did in this life and there's a a, a verse uh, there's a hadith also that indicates every human being will have an initial uh, constriction the grave will literally constrict them to, to where they think they're going to burst their soul and then it will become either easy or difficult and there's a prophetic tradition of Jesus, the son of Mary, who they were looking at a man who was being buried and all the companions said, it's so constricted and narrow. And Jesus says to them, you don't remember the wombs of your mothers that expanded for you. In other words, that the tomb can also expand for you if the soul grew in this life. Whereas if it was stunted, it won't. So this is the sole work that's done in this dunya realm that's going to determine whether you're constricted or expanded in this next stage here. In this stage. Now everybody who has died before us is in this realm with the exception of the martyrs. The martyrs do not go into this realm. They go directly to, uh, to the Divine Presence. They're not, they don't go through this stage. So they're the, they're, they are the exception. And Islam does not restrict martyrdom to those who die witnessing their, their belief, which is the traditional meaning, including in Greek. A martyr was anybody who died witnessing their belief. Um, a person who dies in a fire is considered a martyr. A person who dies of a sudden disease, like um, uh, uh, cholera, a person like dies in a plague, that's a martyr death. A person whose roof falls on them, like in an earthquake. And the, the modern scholars have said that includes by analogy, uh, airplane crashes and car accidents. That these are martyr deaths. As recompension for the trauma of that experience and not having been able to deal with uh, you're difficult, you know, pe I mean, it's people who know they're going to die, it really helps them to resolve a lot of things, whereas if you die suddenly, uh, 
there's a lot of untaken care of business and so this is a recompension for that. Drowning is a martyr death. Those who drown. So these are all deaths of martyrs. Mm -hmm. So in other words, if you've been a real rascal all your life and you die in a car wreck because you were DWI or something. That can, uh, you mean drunk? Yes. Yeah, see, I mean, it's, it's, it, it's based on acceptance. Yeah, like, uh, it just depends on what state you are in. Because people who, who can die, you know, that's the, the assumption of the community is it's a martyr's death. But, but that is not an absolute, in, in, including people who die on the battlefield. We assume that they're martyrs, but there's a hadith that said one of the first people to go to the hellfire is a soldier who fought uh, to be called brave. And he tells God, I, no, I fought for your sake. And God says, you lied. You fought to be called a brave person and you got your reward. They said you were brave. And the same with a scholar who learns that God says, why did you study? He said, I studied for your sake to teach your religion. And he said, you lied. You studied to be called a learned man and you got your reward. And the same with a, a, a wealthy person. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, you have a prostitute, according to the hadith, who once came to a well and, and, and put her shoe down and brought water up and drank it. And there was a dog who was, who was dying of thirst. And she looked at the dog and thought, that dog is like me, thirsty. And so she put her shoe down and, and gave the water to this dog. And, got, and the Prophet Muhammad said she was forgiven all her wrong actions for that one act. Right? And there's another man who said, uh, who comes on the Day of Judgment, the only good action that he had was he used to loan money to people and when he sent his bill collector out, he said, if they don't have it, just leave them. And the hadith says that God said, I am more generous in absolving my debts than this man. So he forgives him. Mm -hmm. um, this may be split in here, but in the case of soldiers fighting both sides in the name of Allah, say for instance, the Iran-Iraq war, yeah. if the soldiers on both sides die, that can happen. And be that can happen, yeah. It depends on if, whether it was a valid ishtihad or not. If, if uh, there's a hadith which says the one killing and the one killed are in the fire. Right? So generally, uh, it's, it's not the case. And they said, we understand the one killed, what about the one killing? Or we understand the one killing, what about the one killed? And he said, well, he would have wanted to kill him had he been able. So they both have that. Whereas if there was a valid ishtihad, which is where, you know, both sides, like in Muawiyah and Ali, this, uh, the initial uh, great tribulation between the two companions who fought. The, there is a hadith that said the one killing and the one killed are both in, in, in paradise, except the one who killed Ammar. And that is considered a mutawatir hadith, which has the highest level of, of, of veracity. It, it's, it's a hadith that so many people narrated it, it's impossible for it to have been considered a lie. And, and that, that's in the tradition. So, uh, and, and that's part of, you know, human beings uh, do uh, crazy things. Uh, and, um, and this is part of the human condition, you know, that there, there's fitna, what's called sedition and troubles. Right? And, and, and these are often seen also as purification because a lot of the tribulations people go through are actually purifications and raising them to higher levels.